Today we've got talks from, I guess, like five or six different database technologies. And um, what's cool about them, of course, is that they all use IPFS, IPLD. And what we're hoping we can do today, and this may be more like open discussion after lunch, is talk about opportunities for interop and like the flexes we can do to show you know, the other parts of the industry, how much power we get from having these IPFS-based data structures. So um, my theory is that almost any one of the technologies we're going to hear from today, um, if the engineers sat down for an afternoon, they could figure out a way to cross-index or reuse data structures shared across all the databases. Um, so it's not that you get it like for free no matter what, but it's like, if you want to be able to do that kind of interop, I don't think you're going to be able to do it outside of this community. So uh, pretty excited about that. So let's see, who, who in the room here is, our, is speaking today? Um, yeah, I think me. The other speakers are probably drinking their coffee still. Uh, so yeah, um, I guess. You know, while we've got some time before the first talk from Aaron Goldman, um, maybe it makes sense to open up that discussion a little bit and see who here is like building toy databases or real databases. Um, anyone else besides me make databases for fun? <laughs> All right. Um, cool. Do y'all want to like holler out what your deal is? Should we like start from over here? Uh, sure. So my name is Enrique. I'm with Protocol Labs, with Consensus Lab more specifically. I mean, I have some background in distributed databases from my past, from my career. Uh, right now, what I'm thinking of is, I mean, it's still something is in the very early design phase, but it's, you know, like a distributed universal database for data analytics, uh, where, you know, like everybody can share data into it and, you know, anyone can run nodes of that database and then you know the queries can be uh, distributed all across uh, you know this computation uh, universe you have mm -hmm. so that's it <laughs> sort of cool yeah so for people who just walked in we're just you know we've got like a half hour before the first talk starts so we're going around and anybody who does database stuff just kind of like mentioning what you do do you want to hand it behind you or you can also take the mic if you don't do database stuff uh, yeah, so I'm Lucas, or Magic6K, on the Falcon Slack and everywhere. Uh, so I work with Protocol Apps also, and I'm working, like I'm building this distributed block store, uh, which is like better data layout that's very easy to put on Falcon, and at the same time it also like actually scales, so it's not some basic KV store that we abuse as a block store, it's just like block store. Uh, so yeah, I was thinking building a blockster that goes fast and nice. very big. Yeah, that is like actually a real helpful thing to do because we all like to just be like, the block store, it's got it. <laughs> I'm, I'm Daniel. I, I used to work on uh, OrbitDB and now I work on uh, my own database. And uh, I'm, I, I'm trying to um, make it so the database can keep moving forward after um, all the peers of all the other clients of uh, been unreliable and gone offline. So, uh, anybody else got database stories to share? Background in databases? Hi, Nathaniel. Um, at Ceramic now, uh, recently, well, three bucks, and prior to that, I was at InfluxDB, helping them build uh, their query engine over there. So, very interested in databases and excited to see how they map to the Web three space. Cool. Um, yeah, and I think your colleague Aaron's up first. Yeah. Hey. Um, so, uh, all right. I'm well, his colleague Aaron, who's also at Ceramic, building a database. And I'm up first. <laughs> nice. That's great. Um, well, we're going to learn more about that database for sure. Uh, and so, trying to, you know, I don't want to run early by starting the talk now. Um, so maybe. There's a topic that uh, Daniel brought up on the like kind of online discussions before this, 
it might be an interesting one and maybe we like don't get juiced up to really get into it for a little bit but um it's about like how I, I don't know do you want to do you want to say what your thoughts were or when you have reliable peers it's it's nice because you can do like um kind of very uh specific uh replication of of data and then you have kind of these um when when you're thinking with services it's a little bit different but uh, um, yeah um yeah, I guess, okay, so when we were talking about this before, we, we, my thought was um, as a transaction engine, like you can, tr you can do something that's like at the data layer, I mean at the like um, your application blocks, right? Like you're writing some tree updates out and now you've got um, IPFS CIDs that you want to sync around. Um, and so maybe, uh, Let's call that like replication strategy A, and replication strategy B is gonna be more like, now let's wrap those up into a car file and send that around. Um, and then there's probably like replication strategy C and D, right, that it would be um, you know, more about like, I guess leveraging the um, immutable identifiers and stability like that. Um, but yeah, I don't know, are there, can we classify the possible databases in the, um, you know, IPFS immutable IPLD realm into, you know, kind of like, like you would outside of it, oh, this is the transaction, you know, OLAP, OLTP, et cetera. Um, and does that map to the, the verbs that the IPFS infrastructure makes available to us? So to me, that's an that's a interesting open question because I'm having to ask myself those questions every day about like, how am I going to implement this part of the transaction layer or whatever? Um, so I don't know if anybody has thoughts on that. <laughs> um, database geeks. <laughs> uh, well, right on. Um, let's see, does anybody else have any like opening topics you think we should talk about, like use cases for databases, the thing that you really wish was solved but it's not, anything like that? I think we need B trees in the advanced data layouts because right now you can index stuff that's in IPFS, but we are not very good at putting indexes themselves into IPFS. Yeah. So let's say I want to do Wikipedia over IPFS. I want an entire inverted index so I can do full text search of that. And those blocks themselves should be in IPFS in a way that I can run that query efficiently in the browser. Right, and then there's just a bunch of really cool um, things that you get for free when you build it that way. Like um, Franz has talked yesterday about the media archiving stuff that he's doing um, with the, like a European government organization. Um, it was uh, enlightening because he was, as an implementer, not trying to be theoretical about the database stuff, but he was still hitting on the same patterns that we're seeing when we build. Um, so like uh, you've got a collection of content and you've got it archived in IPFS and you can put, this is what, I don't think he did this, but he was like, this would work. You could put it in Elasticsearch um, and then have Elasticsearch when it returns the results set also return the CIDs and then use those as proofs to replicate the underlying data and then rerun the query on the client. Um, so it's that kind of stuff that when the index is represented in uh, IPLD graph, then you don't even have to jump through hoops to do that, right? It's almost like um, thinking in terms of the proof and the related block set is the easiest way to do it. Um, so yeah, there's a bunch of benefits to getting indexes into right. the data structures. I think about things like Google searched the web for us and they built an index of the web and we are welcome to use their search engine but we are not welcome to use their index. Mm -hmm. To some extent, we can build much more powerful search algorithms if the thing that we are collaboratively building isn't I build a search engine and you build a search engine and someone else builds a search engine, but we collectively share the effort of building an index and now we can all run whatever algorithms we want because there is a large shared index. Right, yeah, and um, for the folks at home who aren't fully Merkle-brained yet. What? Right? Surely that, no such person exists. <laughs> <laughs> um, it all sounds super dangerous. Let's collaborate on indexing together, right? No. Um, these data structures are immutable, so you can't mess it up. You can literally do all the indexing you want and I can totally ignore you. <laughs> um, and so, 
uh, that opens up the space for data collaboration in a way that is also, I think, really powerful. If you, if, if literally every operation has to be a fork, then um, letting people operate on your data is lower risk. 